Excellent. So today's webinar is about study skills. Um, so yeah, last week we covered time management and organisation and next week we're going to do note taking, but today is all about study skills. So um, what we're covering this webinar is a general kind of overview of some study skills. Then we'll look at active reading and then we'll look at uh, researching as well. So now we actually are going to do some questions on menti.com. So um, if you want to go to www.menti.com and input maybe what are study skills to you. So when you hear study skills, what do you think of? Um, and you can put that code in. This is the code here, is it Keepa? Yep, so I have that in the chat there now. Um, right. so 6684-6699. Great, so you can just pop in what you think study skills are. What do you think, Eva? I was just going to say when I was in um when I first started college, I didn't I don't think I had a very good idea of what study skills were, but for myself it was kind of doing things like mind maps or reading, going through my notes quite a bit. Um trying to take notes, which took a little bit of time as well. Yeah. Um, what about yourself? Did you have anything different? Yeah, it's funny because I think, you know, when you go to college, there is just there's so many new skills you have to learn. Like it's completely different to secondary school. Yeah. Um, it's very independent and. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's its own world, really. Academic study skills is so different. But yeah, yeah I would have just. Um, yeah, I would have, I suppose what would I have done? Um, I would have brought some of the things that I used from secondary, but um, then obviously yeah. adapted new ones as well. Exactly, yeah, it's, a, it's a good um, it's a good basis to go from mm -hmm. you know, what you've learned in, in secondary school. Definitely, so that's good. Yeah, so study groups, brilliant. Um, yeah, using mind maps and yeah, learning how to study, brilliant. Active reading. Uh, it's not all about reading your notes, that's correct. You have to get it in your head. Um, so yeah, it's all about, I suppose, even with your notes there, the kind of notes you're taking and um, being, I suppose, um, not taking everything down. So yeah, that's really, really good. Brilliant. Perfect. Great, so we're, oh, we've more come in. Effective study methods. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's all about, I suppose, quality over quantity. Great, so I'm going to move on now. So um, if we think of study skills, some of the kind of general tips and tricks that you kind of think of is that it's important to plan ahead, make your study timetable a few weeks before your exam starts, um, prioritise your tasks, so rank them in order of importance, or even I suppose if you're thinking what's coming up, what coming up uh, really soon and then make sure you kind of prioritise that. Uh, make to do lists and strike them off when you've kind of completed the task. That's really, really um, important. And then post it notes can be really helpful as well. Just stick them around your room or stick them on, um, you know, I suppose your copies and things like that. Establish a routine and set alarms and reminders on your phone. So that's that. And then as well, a good idea is to invest in a planner, a diary or a notebook, so that'll help you keep organised. And if you have a big task to do, break it down into manageable chunks. So for example, on a Monday, do two readings, then on Tuesday, read over the notes from class and Wednesday, write down your introduction. So that just makes it seem a little less overwhelming. Um, set realistic and achievable goals and minimise distraction. So if your phone keeps pinging, it's probably a good idea to put it on focus mode just so you can concentrate. And then as well, another good idea is to use an incentive. So for example, if there's a Netflix show you're really into, say if I complete this introduction, then I'll get to sit down and watch that later on. So all about making it increase in motivation as well. And then, so getting started is always the hardest part. Um, oh, sorry, can you, does that change there? No, it's okay. Oh, it's okay, sorry. For some reason, um, I can't see the screen anymore, so I better just change it. There we go, okay. So remember that activation precedes motivation. So what does that mean? It means that very often we will not feel motivated to complete a task, especially when it is something difficult or enjoyable. Therefore, we must activate the behaviour first. So start working and motivation will increase. 
So if you use the five minute rule, for example, if you're really struggling to get started, tell yourself you will do it for five minutes without stopping and see if you still want to stop after five minutes. So it's all about kind of trying to just get you started. And then once you're in the zone and you've kind of, I suppose, started typing or maybe type writing down some notes, it's easier to keep going then. I uh, use this myself. I have and I set a timer on my phone and it is really useful even for um, sometimes getting stuck into our admin stuff. I'll be like, OK, just just get it done, because the sooner you get it done, the better it is. So that's yeah. a really useful tip to, to have. Yeah. It's really good to know. Um, and then, yeah, so there's SMART goals. We kind of touched on this a little bit last week, but this is applicable to almost every area of academics. So um, if you're making a goal, like you have a task to do, especially coming up, to, you know, when you have assignments due or coming up to studying and beginning to get into your study for different subjects, make the goal SMART. So that is S stands for specific. Um, for measurable, A for achievable, or for relevant, and T for time-based. So um, an example is that you have to write an introduction for your essay, so that's the specific goal. Um, measurable is that you'll write 300 words. Achievable is that 300 words is very doable, you can manage that. Relevant is that it's for your next upcoming deadline, and then time-based, um, is that it would be completed, let's say, between six and eight tonight. So it's just really making that framing that goal so that doesn't seem as overwhelming and seems very achievable. And so now another question. So do you use a study timetable? So you can go again to menti.com and input the code and let us know if you're into using them or not. Did so you anybody who has um, joined, so it's uh, like Michelle said, go to www.menti.com and the code is 66846699. Um, sorry, Michelle, I think you were going to, were you asking me if I'd use this yeah. study timetable? Yeah. yeah, I was definitely somebody for, uh, happened to use a, a study timetable. How about you? Me too, I did. I always kind of made a study timetable, but then I found, you know, as I got through the study, some things took me way longer than I thought they would and other things took less. So it definitely adjusted. But yeah. I think it's good if you kind of um, if you, I suppose, build that into the timetable as well. And um, Sorry, I have someone calling me there. Every disturbance happening. <laughs> um, yeah, great. So here then. OK, so two people um, do you study timetables, three don't. Um, so that's great. And like even maybe after today, I suppose we see a little bit more about them, you might be more interested in using them, but that's really, really good feedback. So thank you everybody for doing that. Um, great, and here's a, an example of a study week timetable. So we'll kind of get into this bit more as well, closer to your exams. Um, it'll be covered again, but just like an example, obviously everybody would change it um, to suit themselves and they'll build in work maybe if they have work uh, to attend. But I suppose the basic thing here is that um, You've kind of cut, you've included all the modules that are coming up. So, for example, if you have psych, psychology um, exam, you've included that there and you've given um, specific time to each module. And then as well, you build in um, your exercise, Netflix, um, or maybe if you want to see some friends and then have a little bit of flexi time in so that if things change, you can always adapt. And if a certain subject takes you longer, you can slot it in that time. Um, instead of panicking. So that's just um, an example there. And then here are just a few tips if you ever decide to make a study timetable. Um, I know that your exams aren't coming up until um, January, but you know, um, it could be a good idea to, I suppose, bear these in mind if you ever do. So firstly, um, you could prioritise studying for the closest exams first, um, then schedule flexi time to cover topics that are more difficult to grasp or topics you ran out of time to study. Ensure to include breaks or exercise and downtime. Either study one module all day or mix and match subjects on different days depending on your study style. Aim to create notes as you study that you can highlight or glance over right before exams and be realistic with your time and aim to start studying early to avoid cramming. So and these are really relevant for doing your essays That's as well. So giving important. yourself enough time to it's about active reading. And we have oh, a question here for you on Menti. 
So once again, if you want to go to www.menti.com and use the code 66846699 and then you can answer this question. So how many recommended readings have you received so far? I know when I first went to college, um, I was overwhelmed by the amount of readings like because there's so there's so much information in them. Um, but yeah, it's brilliant. So four people have got back. It's really good. So you've received a few. So that's great. So it's not like you receive. You feel that there's so much that you can't um, manage it, um, but also you have received a few. Great. Um, so yeah, so I suppose now in, with active reading, we're kind of going to look at um, how to kind of approach those readings so that they don't seem um, like they'll take up loads of time. So um, it's important then to think um, what is the goal of the reading or what is the goal of reading this document? So um, let's say if you have an article to read for an essay or for, for um, a lecture, uh, are you reading it for an exam? Are you reading it for an assignment? Are you reading it just to understand the text and kind of comprehend it? Um, so yeah, just always bear that in mind because I suppose that will really frame how you um, read it. Uh, let's say, for example, if it's understanding the text then you can kind of maybe look at the introduction and kind of glance over results and things like that. But if it's for an assignment, you might need to go into more detail. So it always varies. Um, and it's also very important to remember to record uh, the title of the paper, the author's name, the year of publication and the page numbers that you are focusing in on. And this will really stand to you when you are referencing uh, the paper. So uh, very, very important there. And so then active reading. So uh, the purpose of active reading, uh, you're previewing to find if a text is useful, um, read the title, author's name, year and the headings or graphs, uh, then skimming. So um, you're quickly locating a relevant section, read the first and the last lines of paragraphs and keywords. Then for scanning, uh, after skimming and finding relevant information, focus on this paragraph, slow down during a relevant section. And then for critical reading, you're preparing for exams and assignments, find the theoretical approaches and the pros and cons of the text. So yeah, here's the four different types of active reading and I suppose depending on what your the purpose of the reading is, you'll be doing different types. Um, perfect, oops, sorry, I jumped ahead. Um, okay, so then um, active reading is reading to remember. So then uh, here's a technique, so it's X, X, Q, 3 or so that involves survey, question, read, recite and review. So we're going to kind of go into these now in more detail. So the first step is the survey. So this is looking through the whole reading um, slash chapter to preview it. Uh, so you're looking at titles, subheadings, abstracts, summaries, introduction and conclusion, pictures, charts and graphs, the first and last sentences in the paragraphs and the conclusion. And the second step is to question. So as you're doing step one of surveying, note down questions. This will keep you alert. So for example, you could ask yourself, what is this chapter or article about? What did my lecturer say about the chapter or subject? What do I already know about this paper? So you're asking questions like what, who, how and why? And then you can also devise questions that will guide your reading. So what are the specific questions you are looking to answer? and turn subheadings of the paper into questions. So this is all kind of dissecting the reading a bit further. And then step three is read. So look for answers to the questions. Carefully read the important sections that you identified in step one. Skim the less important sections. Make notes, underline, highlight important concepts. Question the author's reasoning. Is it justified? Is there enough evidence? and make sure you're understanding what you're reading. Reduce your reading speed and reread difficult passages. And it also mentions here about taking brief notes while reading. So if you have a large, um, let's say, article to read, it, it is a good idea to just, I suppose, highlight key parts or take notes so that, you know, some things will, you won't forget everything because it's just unrealistic to think that you'll take it all in. There's so much information. So yeah, that's really 
important. And then step four, um, recite. So close your book, try to remember each section, what were the main points, say it out loud in your own words, and write a summary of the paragraph or section. Note cards or mind maps can be really helpful here. And then step five is to review. So check the accuracy of your notes against the original paper. Look over your reading notes and quiz yourself on the information. Revisit it weekly and test yourself on new and old material each week. So these are all just to help you really kind of retain the information. So um, back to Menti again, uh, www.menti.com and then use the code 6684-6699. Would you use active reading? Yes, no, or might try it out. Something like I would definitely use my use great. Myself. So a lot of you are already using um, active reading, which is brilliant. That's so good. Um, what about you, Kiva? Would you ever use active reading? Yeah, I think so. It, it seems like a really, a really good one. Can you hear me? Sorry, no, I don't think I can. I'm not actually hearing you, Kiva. I'm not sure if that's why that is. Um. Okay, I'm not sure. I'm just going to escape out of this for one second just to see if that's working okay. Now, Kiva, are you, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, you can, can okay, you. good, right. Sorry, I'm going to go back in because I was afraid there that I wasn't presenting anymore at all. Um, no, that's I don't know what so I was presenting anyways, and I can't hear Kiva, but we won't worry about that. Present again. Perfect. Okay. Um, ideal. So, um, great. Okay. Um, so now the next question here, um, on to Menti again, uh, how do you feel about doing research? So it's kind of, I suppose, a concept that is pretty new for most of you, because I suppose with, um, secondary, you would have kind of had the information presented to you and you just had to learn it maybe off by heart or, um yeah it's quite a different style so how do you guys feel about doing research um if you just want to uh in, in, i suppose mention I hope this is working now oh good it's working <laughs> nervous that makes sense um yeah it's very overwhelming i agree um definitely yeah Michelle, can you hear me now? Yeah, it is a lot. Um, especially, I suppose, the, the amount that you, it seems like you have to take in, it almost seems like just impossible, really. But I would bear that in mind because, you know, when they're giving you lots of um, suggested readings and things like that, like it's impossible to cover all of it. So it is about really going right, what are the key pieces here and focusing in on them. And that's a skill in itself. So that will develop as you go through college. Um, it's, it's you're not meant to have it now and, and that's totally normal. And most, I'd say 95% of first years don't have it either. So, you know, it's nothing, nothing to worry about. Um, yeah, scary, not sure where to start, absolutely. Um, brilliant. Yes, that's really good feedback, guys. Thank you so much for that. Going to keep going. Uh, so, yeah. Right. So why do we research topics then? So research is an important component of your uh, assignment preparation process. Through reading and thinking about that material and writing it in your own words, that your learning is increased and also demonstrated to the lecturer. OK, so um why research topics again so it's it saved it saves time it produces more relevant results it allows you to evaluate information it increases your knowledge base and it gets you better grades um and i'm not sure if you guys have been even told this trick yet but i know one thing i used to always do is if you have an article to read look at the references at the bottom and see like let's say that paper might have referenced a paper that might even be more relevant for you. So it, that's a really quick way to kind of find 
information you know so that's um i always found when i found that out anyways that really helped me so it might help you guys as well but um yeah so then for research or, or researching you have to define the task so good research begins with good preparation um so try to understand what exactly what the question is asking so you know how to answer it really well uh read your brief or your question carefully uh before starting to research ensure you haven't missed any key parts of the assignment and identify key areas and concepts. Identify what kind of information you want to know about and essential information. So here's this kind of, I suppose, a way to start tackling the research. Uh, it's a good idea to create a search plan. So you will need a search plan to begin your search for information. Go back to your assignment brief. Again, ask yourself, what is the question and what information do you need to answer the question? Highlight keywords and begin making a list of words for each concept and include similar words um, or alternative spellings. So, you know, if you have whatever the exam question or the research question is, for example, taking out those keywords, thinking of um, some synonyms, so similar words and entering them into either Google Scholar or wherever you've decided to do your research and um, like with uh, the other synonyms and just changing it around because it'll bring you up lots of different types of um, papers and things like that. So it's important just to kind of keep, you'll get the best information if you kind of just really search well and do um, a real thorough, I suppose, investigation. And so here's an example then. So if you look at your assignment brief, use a different highlighter and underline what you expected to write about. So here's a question then. Compare and contrast two communication models and discuss how they are used in advertising practice. Identify two examples to support your findings. Right, so as you can see, two communication models um, is a key part of that question. Advertising practice is another key part, and then they want two examples to support um, the question then. Right, so this question has asked you to look at two communication models and discuss how these are used in practice in the role of professional advertising agencies. So a search plan might look like you must find the two models, assess their validity or usefulness, and then identify two examples of advertising in which the theories are recognisable to you. In other words, you need to demonstrate how these theories are used in practice. OK, so that's an example of how you might break down a question and it's covering all the different parts as well, which is really important to make sure you can kind of um, maximise uh, the score that you'll get. OK, and then so locating relevant resource material, which is a whole other minefield really in itself. So what sources are available? Uh, what are the best sources to use? Identify what to look for and where to find it. Um, so you can kind of look, I suppose, at library catalogues, databases, bibliographies, uh, which is um, the part I was talking about there earlier. Um, then search engines, recommended texts, books, journals, images, people. So many places you can find um, information. And then uh, you have to decide search terms and research parameters. Um, Right, so how do you gather information for your essays? Um, so really, I suppose when we say, how do you gather information for your essays, that really is just researching. Um, so what do you guys do now? Um, what's your general approach? Hopefully this is working now still. Can't hear Kiva, so not sure, but hopefully it is. Um, oh, brilliant, it is great. Um, Google Scholar, brilliant. Yeah, look at readings for more. Brilliant, library. Um, I know when I was in first year, I used to always uh, go to the library um, and the books, because I feel like that was the thing. That's what I thought I had to do, get books out. Um, and I think, I suppose, like researching online seems so much more daunting than going to a book, but then like it is brilliant going on online. And I suppose it's a really quick way to 
do a large kind of get an overview, I suppose, of the kind of research out there. Um, but yeah, that's really good videos, articles, great. Brilliant. Yeah, that's really, really good. Um, I suppose depending on the department that you're in, um, you have might have access to different databases as well um, for your subjects of choice and things like that. So that's really good. But Google Scholar is always a very safe bet as well. It has nearly everything on it, which is great. Um, brilliant. So I'll keep going then. Um, on to the next part. Brilliant. OK, so. Um, in terms of organising uh, your research then um, to help you sort it or structure it. So this step of the research process requires a more detailed reading of the resource material and the development of a structure for the assignment. Here the skills of note taking and arranging information are necessary. So let's say you've kind of gathered maybe relevant articles and you feel like they might support your um, maybe what you're going to write about in the essay um, or assignment, then it's all about, okay, organizing it. What goes first? How will they flow and things like that? So that's when, you know, you're really looking at note taking and things like that. Um, so it's important as well uh, when organizing your research to keep your notes focused on the topic. Write in your own words. So this will save you time later. There's no point taking down really complicated words. Um, from the research and maybe you, you don't understand what they're saying. So it's good to kind of paraphrase it for yourself. Um, and if you want to take the way they said it and maybe um, rearrange it, then you can. Just if you note down where you found it, you can always look back. Um, sort information into categories, um, which will then help you when you're structuring it out. Some things might fit better at the start and some things might really help you when you're concluding. Consider how various elements of the topic connect to one another. Um, yeah, so that's that's even tying into your kind of general essay writing, even that you would have learned in English. It's all about starting broad and then kind of um, becoming more specific as you continue. Uh, establish a detailed plan or outline the assignment. Um, it can be really handy even just to write that down on paper or jot it down so that if you're kind of going off track or you're losing concentration, you can just look back at that and get more ideas. Develop an argument. Um, this is important to critically evaluate the information. So this is kind of, a, I suppose, very much unique to being university. Um, you know, it's all about kind of really evaluating if it's a good argument, um, if the article is from legitimate source and things like that, um, and arguing why you've chosen to include what you have. Then using quotations effectively and sparingly. So. Um, yeah, use quotations, let's say, um, when you feel they really feed into your point, but it's better to, let's say, um, yeah, not overdo it, let's say. And then uh, reference as you go, which is so important. Um, it's quite hard. It's a very tedious task, really, but uh, it's re it'll help you so much at the end when you're trying to rush to get it in, maybe, that you have your references there and you just type them up really quickly. Um, so there are some tips and... Then a really brief note on um, note taking. So um, do not spend hours writing out, let's say, really detailed notes. Um, it's good to take notes, obviously, so that you can jog your memory, but um, it's all about quality and not the quantity, really. So um, you do like, for example, now in lectures and things like that, you do not need to note down everything that the lecturer says, just take the key points out and um, that'll help you later because you won't have time. You might not have time to, let's say, take it all down and read up over it all again. Um, it's important to note as well that everyone has their own note taking style. Some of these styles include Cornell, um, mind mapping, five ORs and the outlining methods. Um, but we're going to cover more on this next week. So um, tune in if you'd like to find out more about them. You might have heard of some of them or you might not, but we'll cover them anyways next week and they might be beneficial. Um, but yeah, so that's, I suppose, important to remember as well when you're kind of, it's applicable to all of those areas we've discussed there. So researching and active reading and yeah. So um, does anybody have any questions? If you do pop them in the chat or if you want, you can ask me. Um, I think Eva might stop recording now. Um, 
Oopsie grunt. Um, 